All right, welcome everybody to Day Trading the Average Joe Way. And just to give you a kind of a quick heads up, this is all about me um, and how I approach trading. You know, day trading is it's like an art form. It it can take different forms, different shapes, different theories. Um, and this class is really designed to share, you know, mine and everything that I've done to get to where I'm at and everything that I do every day. Um, and it's going to be focused around, you know, centered around that. So I may not cover some indicators. I may not cover some um, candlestick formations, but it's only because I don't use them. You know, I don't use them in my trading. They're not important to me. So, you know, why waste time bringing them into something? Because one thing you're going to realize if you haven't already the more simple and the less moving parts you can have in your trading, the more consistent you're going to be. So my thing was to filter out all of the noise, all of the things that I don't use that, that's not important to me. And then, you know, just bring in and, and maximize the effectiveness of the tools and the indicators that I do use. So that's kind of what you're going to see um, going forward. Um, and, you know, by law, I have to share this disclaimer. Um, and, you know, everybody knows this. Everybody knows me. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a registered broker. So I don't trade for anybody else but me. I'm a private equities trader. I only trade for myself. Um, so the service I provide um, doesn't constitute any solicitation, recommendation, promotion, or endorsement of any particular security or other investment product. It's all in the name of education. Everything that I do, everything that I share is for educational purposes. It's to help you get to the point where you're self-sufficient. And you're able to go out here and make it on your own. And that all you need to do in the chat room is you just have a social outlet. Because day trading can be lonely if you're out here by yourself. Um, also, my process and services, they work if you do the work. You know, it's not going to do the work for you. It's not meant to be an alert service is not it's like I said it's all meant to be educational and I represent everything as honest and as truthful as possible uh, everything that I teach has worked for me and you see me use it every day it's, it's I don't teach what I don't do so you know you're gonna see that so I've taken every effort to accurately represent um, my service, what I'm teaching, and you know, but there's still the bottom line, there's no guarantee that you're gonna make money just by being in the chat room, just by you know, coming into class or watching education webinars. It's not a get rich quick scheme, and it's not really a guarantee of earnings. It's what's possible if you put in the time and you develop in the in the way that is right and is best for you. You know, because in the end it's gonna be up to you. Alright, so you know most of you know my stories, but for those that do not, um I started out um as an engineer. I want I went into automotive engineering and I kind of got the education book. Um, I wanted to teach 
and honestly, I wanted to have summers and vacations off to spend with my family and my kids. And that's why I looked at getting into teaching, but I did like teaching. My parents were teachers, my dad and my mom. All grandparents on both sides of my family were teachers. And my great-grandparents were teachers. So I come from a long line of teachers. And it was just kind of a, a normal, um, you know, a normal thing for me to get into. Um, so I did go back. Um, did get an education degree. And I still teach the classes for new teachers who are coming out of industry just like I did and going into the classroom. So I do teach those classes um, still and I'm, you know, I enjoy that. But I've been in and out of the market since 1999. Um, I opened up an, an Ameritrade account back in 99 when the internet trading thing, I think I saw an advertisement <clears throat> and I opened up an account. Didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, it was fun. It was intriguing. It's what I always wanted to do. Um, but it wasn't until 2014 that I started really looking into day trading. And that's when everything really started ramping up. So I've been doing it since 2014. It's um, day trading. Now, I've used the education and strategies, the processes, and the reflection that I bought, that I brought from my engineering and education career into trading. And it wasn't until I did all of that that things really started to click for me. You know, I brought, because, you know, and you're going to learn if you haven't already, that trading is 80% mental. It's 80% mental and only 20% of practical knowledge of the setup. Because the setups are easy to learn, it's applying them. It's actually entering and exiting the trade and managing the trade is where you really get into um, trouble. And so using these strategies, developing the process, and using the reflection all of these that I brought over really helped me focus in on my trading and narrow down what I needed to focus on what needed what works what didn't and that's when things really started clicking you know I took several educational programs it's no secret it's all on my blog um, everybody's room that I've been in, everybody's um, class that I've taken. Um, so through all of that, I've been able to define myself as a trader, really who specializes in trading and growing a small account. I, I, I like trading smaller size and making money, good money trading small size. Um, yeah, I do trade big in, in my other account, but I don't do it as often. I typically do more swing trades like that. I don't really day trade using a lot of size. Um, and that's just what I've developed into, and it's what I'm most comfortable with. And I try to show that you can make money just trading smaller size. I mean, there are days where I may only make one or two hundred dollars a day in a day, you know, when the market's not really good. I think I averaged, you know, maybe two hundred dollars a day throughout the summer, you know, but when we have a solid day or a good day like today where we have some decent follow through, um, you know, trading 100 and 200 share position sizes, I made over 600 bucks and I didn't have a whole lot of money exposed in the market and my stops were tight 
but everything was managed and I still didn't manage it perfectly I still left some on the table but it's it's what you can do with smaller size and and what you need to do to grow and develop as a trader you know everybody has to start small you have to be comfortable in trades you have to be comfortable managing your trades and that's why you know I can trade like yesterday I mean I traded a thousand or two thousand shares of that small cap stock you know it wasn't nothing to me but I had to build myself up to that and that's why I, I stress starting small and learning how to trade with smaller size and maximizing it so that you're responsible and you're able to manage your positions when you get you know to the next level so I started back in 2014 with 1500 bucks I had to refund it five times maybe six I tried to go back and count and I think it was five times but by the end of 2014 I had ninety eight hundred dollars in my account that was like mid-December and I pulled that out I pulled uh, forty eight hundred dollars out I left five thousand in it because I said I'm on a trade with five thousand dollars a month because I still wasn't confident in myself I, I still didn't want to lose a whole lot of money plus you know sure trading was still scary to me and having money overseas and everybody complaining about not being able to get their money and all of this so I said, well, I'm just not going to keep a lot of money over there and I'm going to keep wiring out. And I'll start saving and growing, you know, trying to grow my account. So then in 2015, I started with five grand. And if you were in the market in 2015, you know it was a strong market. And I was able to take five grand. And by this time in 2015, I had um, made over 75 grand in profits just trading a $5,000 account. I mean, I could throw, I could blindfold myself and throw darts and and make big, you know, good money in the trade. The market was just just awesome then. Um, and then you know when I started this, um, when I was working with other traders who were just starting out and you know I started with fifteen hundred dollars like three times last year um, and I was just doing it to show this the traders that I work with that you can grow you just have to take your time and accept making you know seventy five dollars a hundred dollars you know or fifty dollars here you know three fifty dollar trades after commissions that's hundred and fifty dollars you're putting on your bottom line you know you do that three or four days a week you know what are you gonna have how it's not gonna take you long to get to where you want to be you know so it's really and it all boils down to you know you and how you approach it and how willing you are to take the time and dedication necessary to get there. Now I did this working full time. You know and it was all about. The process. Which is you know the first thing that we're going to talk about. Because everybody. At this point. You're serious about learning how to day trade. You know some of you guys have taken. This is your second you know go around in the class and you serious about wanting to do this and you know you have you know that longevity that determination that you need you know now it's just taking small baby steps and start putting it all together and just not getting too far not going too far too fast Alright, so 
this is how the um, the course is broken up. The first part of the course deals with foundation. You know, I tell you exactly what I think day trading is about. Um, I work with you on my process and helping you develop a process that you need to follow every day um, and developing a business plan. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the same stuff I did in the video series. Um, you know, how to grow a small account, how to really grow a small account. I'm going to refer you back to those videos so that you could go back and pick up. You know, I don't want to waste your time going over too much of the same thing. But what we're going to do is take it to the next level. And if you haven't built and developed a plan, we're going to be doing it. You know, the first the first part of this this um, course. Then we get into my scans and my charting you know the indicators that I use how my chart set up um, technical analysis and then simulated trading you know how I try how I I use the simulator because I still do it I still paper trade you know if there's Friday you know if it's Thursday or Friday and I see a, a stock that I would like to swing trade but for me, I don't like to take them on Thursday or Friday. So I'll write down, this is where I'm going to enter. Right here where the stock is now. And I'll write the plan down. And I'll paper trade. And that helps me get better. You know, the more screen time you get, whether it's simulated or whether it's actual trading, is going to benefit you in the long run. So we're going to we're going to get into that. Then the bulk of the class that we have in the middle is going to deal with the strategies, the opening range trades, the trend continuation, the reversals and the pre-market trading. And, you know, my strategies on how I do all of that. And one thing that we're going to do different this time is that I'm going to ask you guys to share at least one trade you did that week you know for um see when we were covering opening range trades share one trade that you did you know you could email it to me and I could bring it up in class so you can you know everybody has access to screen share you know and if you don't have problems setting it up on your computer you could actually share your screen but I want everybody to be, I want you to be involved and really get a good feel for what these trades are actually all about. So the bulk of the class in the middle is going to be dealing with the strategies. And then the last part of it, we deal with the trading psychology. You know, identifying who you are as a trader, um, helping you deal with the emotions that you feel in the trades in trades helping you develop that confidence so that you can be that calm cool and collected trader you know everything and this isn't stuff that I pulled out of a book or anything this is what I do and sometimes it may not make sense or it may sound elementary but I'm from the, the kids school keep it simple stupid and as long as I, I can do that, I feel that I can be consistent and profitable. And that's the main thing. All right. All right, so today, um, this class, we're going to, you know, talk about the troops. We've, you've heard me talk about these before. Um, we'll elaborate on them just a little bit. Um, my process, you know how important my process is, the pre-market, the aftermarket. And if we have time, we're going to get into my scanning because that's, 
I'm trying to, to cover everything as as you experience it in a normal trading day. That's kind of the way you know I'm I'm laying this out. All right, so these are truths that I've introduced before. If you've seen them, you know, here or there, you understand what I mean. Um, but your trading success is not going to happen when you want it to. And you have to understand that it is a process. It's going to take time. And trying to find a shortcut or the holy grail is going to lead you to continue to blow up your account. I know this for a fact. You know, I tried to get these this stock horizon picker to tell me what stock to get and where to get in and where to get out. You know, but the fact is, yeah, it predicted winning trades. The problem was I couldn't execute because of the psychological aspect of trading I could not execute and so trying to shortcut and trying to to mirror trades is all it's gonna do is get you in more trouble and eventually it's, it's really gonna hurt you you know and I don't um, I know all you guys you know no Ross you know I was over there and you know, too many. I saw too many people try to mirror trade what he did, and what he did is so fast you can't you can't do it. And it it was just an easy way for people to just continue to lose money. So trying to find a shortcut or trying to find somebody that you can follow in and out of trades, you know, it may work for a little bit, but eventually you're gonna have to learn on your own. You know, I know there are people that follow me in the trades because a lot of my trades are slower. And yes, yeah, it's, it's easy to follow in. But, you know, sometimes the market hasn't been good this summer. And, you know, sometimes people go in, they get mad when they when it doesn't work or they stop out and I don't. And the trade ends up working and. You know, all of that does is create animosity and bad, you know, bad feelings. So you want to focus on learning how to, you know, to trade on your own, learning how to manage a trade and know that it's going to be a process and it's going to take time. And I already said this and you're going to hear me say this many times, 80% of success success in trading is psychological and 20% is strategy if you don't have your mind right you can have the best tools you can have the best strategies but if you can't um, if you can't perform if you can't execute there's nothing you can do you're not going to be able to apply anything that you learn. And that's that's one of the things that I realized because in teach, you know, being a teacher, I had to take so many psychology classes because dealing with with high school students, whew, I'm telling you that <laughs> I, I could be a, a a psychologist right now or a psychiatrist. Um, but I, that's when I realized that mentally I wasn't able to handle day trading. And it was a, I mean, it was a scary realization. But then I realized that, hey, I can, I can fix this. Now that I've identified the problem. What do I need to do to get it right? You know, and and thankfully I found um, oh Mark Douglas. You know, God rest his soul. He, 
you know, I found him in his book, and I was able to put these pieces together. So just remember, if you're having trouble trading, and let's say you're trading a strategy that's working for somebody else and you're having trouble executing it, it's, it's all mental. You may not want to believe it or you may be blocking it out, but it is mental. And once you figure out what you're seeing wrong or what you're feeling wrong or how you're reacting to it the wrong way, you're going to be good to go. All right, so 90% of all self-proclaimed day traders lack the right education. Now, I was guilty of getting the wrong education and trying to put it together. You know, because what happens is you have all of these pieces of the, and you just throw them out. And you don't know how to put them together. You don't have a model of success. And that's one of the things that I want to, that I focus on in this class and in the chat room is I want to be a model of success. What success looks like. And success isn't always a winning trade. Success could be managing a losing trade right. Sticking to your stops. You know, not taking a trade, not revenge trading. Talking to yourself and telling you, no, it doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. Let's not take it right now. You know, sometimes you hear me say that. And sometimes I don't listen to myself. But for the most part, I, I listen. And we have to have that, that mentality. We have to have that in the back of our mind that we know this is what we're supposed to do. You know, this is how, you know, Ed does it. This is how this guy does it. And, you know, it works. So I need to make sure that I put my pieces together. And your puzzle may look different than mine. Your pieces may fit differently than mine. But what you're going to have to do is make sure that you take your time and put these pieces together. You know, before you really get deep into um, this trading. So this is... Um, something else that's really 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 important you no know, you have to treat your trading like a small business you are running a business so that's why I say we establish a business plan we establish a budget and we stick to it and and we're gonna we're gonna build one in here you know because without that foundation it's going to be very difficult for you to have something to fall back on. I can start over right now. Well, t actually, I start over every month. Every month, I start over. And that is what helps keep me sharp. And I think that's one of the secrets is that, you know, I'm starting from the beginning every month. And that that focus and that that drive it, it just stays. You know, I I never lose it because I need that focus when I'm trading a smaller account. And that same plan that I put together that when I first started figuring out I needed a plan, I'm still using it. I've tweaked it here and there, but it's still focused on growing you know my account and that's the mentality you know that I have to have because I tried um, when was it uh, 2015 yeah 2015 I had it was um, September and I had opened up speed trader I had 
you know, my money in there. And I'm like, I'm not trading in short trader anymore. I'm a speed trader and and my mindset changed. And I went the whole month of September and October and I lost about 1800 bucks in those two months. I went from killing it, making almost 78 grand until I switched over and then I went to losing um, 1800 bucks in two months. And then I realized the problem was I needed to go back. I had that foundation to go back to that plan. I went back to the plan and I started from the beginning and everything took off again. So, you know, establishing that plan now is, is going to be key. Establishing a budget is going to be key as well. Because not only, you know, are you going to want to add money from your trading, but let's say you have a side job or you, you do extra, extra work and you make a couple dollars here and there. You know, why not add that to your trading account? But why not put it in an account so that you can open your main account faster? You know, it's it's um you know a win win. Alright, and the last one is you have to be ready to take full responsibility for whatever happens in your trade. If your internet goes out and it causes you to lose money, you have to take responsibility for it. You know, if your um, broker platform, if it freezes or something goes awry and you can't get out of a trade, you have to take responsibility for it. Because when you trade, when you put that trade in, you're accepting that risk. You're accepting the fact that this money I put on this trade, I can lose. And it may not even be my fault. It may be an act of nature that, you know, can cause you to, to lose. But you can't, you have to just accept responsibility for it and move on. If you do that, you're going to trade with a clearer mind. You're not going to be mad at the world. You know, you're going to be focused and everything is going to be focused on on your trading. And that's what's going to be key going forward. You know, being able to take responsibility for anything and everything that happens is is going to be um is going to be key here. Alright, so everybody that's heard me talk has heard me talk about the process and how everything we do has a process. You know, there's a process to the way we wake up. We just don't think about it because we've done it over and over and over again. It's part of our, our, um, our routine that we don't even think about anymore. Um, you know, there's a process for us learning how to talk, for us learning how to write, for us learning how to walk. And everything that we've learned, there's been a process to it. In school, when the teachers, the teachers teach you in a way that builds your knowledge over a period of time. And there's a process that that teacher uses to teach you. And not all teachers use the same process. You know, but it is. And, you know, sometimes, depending on the subject, it may take you longer to learn. You know, it may take you longer to learn a foreign language than um, it is for you to learn math. So the math teacher, it, they may move a little bit faster than you trying to learn and write in a foreign language. You know, I, remember I had trouble 
in Spanish. Even though I knew Spanish and my mom spoke Spanish at home and she taught Spanish, all I knew were the bad stuff. I could I could say anything bad. But when it came to learning what I was supposed to learn, you know, it, it was so boring to me. But until I accepted the fact that I didn't know structured Spanish, you know, I wasn't, I couldn't write it. And, and until I embraced the, the process of the way the teacher was teaching it, I couldn't connect the dots and once I was able to do that you know I took off you couldn't stop me but in trading is the same way you know we have there's a process to learning and we have to take our time and that's why I don't do this class every day for like two weeks or three weeks you don't you have to let stuff sink in you have to be able to go back over and and listen to it again or think about it or reflect on it. You know, that's going to be key to helping you uh, move forward. All right. So as a teacher and an engineer, I believe 100% in the process approach to trading and I really and I know for a fact that it's the big secret to my success is approaching everything like a process you know I have my morning routine which we're going to talk about you know that I go through where I develop you know my watch list is part of that I build my trading plan plans a part of that I have my trading plan and I initiate and execute that plan and then at the end of the day I reflect on what I did this may sound like a lot of work but I promise you this will help you get better faster it's not a shortcut because it's, it, it's work to do it but it helps you get better faster And that's why, you know, the, the process is, is very important. Because, you know, and I already had told you, you think about things that you do every day. There's a process to driving a car. To starting a car. Just to start a car up. You know, if you don't put your foot on the brake when you hit the start button, the car won't start. I don't care how many times you hit it. If you don't put your foot on the brake, it's not going to start. If you're driving a um, stick shift, if you don't push the clutch in, it's not going to start. You know, there's certain things that, and even though it's a simple process, there's an order to how you do things. And if you try to circumvent that, you're just getting in your own way. And trading is, is just like that. Um, so a process in trading is is good because it provides a sense of order to your day so think about and, and here was one of the problems I had I was trading at school um, so my classes and everything was during market hours it was during market hours so how how was I supposed to teach and trade at the same time so it was very frustrating you know trying to to work the two but what happened was I realized you know what I need to set some type of routine so that when I come in to the market I'm gonna come in the same way every day and I'm gonna be calm cool and ready to work and the way I, where I got that from was in my class I needed to have an order to how the students came in class and got ready. And if I did that, that set the tone for the rest of the day in class. 
and I usually didn't have issues with students, you know, when the day started out in an orderly fashion. So I was like, well, you know, my training is a mess, just like my classes used to be until I started, you know, with the a process in the morning for my students to, as they come into the class, the routine that they had to follow. So having a sense of order is is key. I have one trader who would rush home from work every day to try to trade the open. And I'm like, you're rushing every day you get here and you're rushing in the trades and you're losing every day. Even though the trade is good, you get in too soon, you get stopped out. You're mentally, you're beat up, and then you're done. So don't worry about trading the open. When you get in, take your time, get the watch list together, and then look just for secondary trades. If that's all you can do, that's all you can do. But you will grow, and you will get better. You can't focus on the things that you can't do, but you have to focus on the things that you can do. And having a process and having a um, routine that you can follow without question day in and day out, that's going to provide that stability. And coming into the market with a sense of stability, a sense of calmness is going to help you. It's, I'm telling you, it's like night and day. Because I used to rush, try to build a watch list real quick. Um, right before the market opens and I, I was just a mess when I came up with the process of getting to work early building my watch list early having you know when I was at work I had to have it done by like 8 15 8 30 because that's when I had to start the class and so I had my watch list built my charts built, my um, levels laid out so that when we went to break at 930, I could just come straight to my computer and sit down and watch the open because I wasn't trading the open. I was trading, um, at that time, I was trading the 15-minute opening range. So I was waiting the first 15 minutes and let the stock settle and trade and with the market as good as it was then you know 15 minute opening range was was working great you know now I have to do five minutes because of you know the lack of follow through in the market but it worked the key is I had a routine that I followed that I built around my job so that when I did have time to trade, I could focus on it and I didn't have to worry about anything else but what I was doing. And that made all the difference in the world. And so I had a schedule for my whole day. You know, I was able to trade from 9.30 to say 10.15. And then I could come in around 11.15 at lunch and trade from 11.15 to 12.45. Um, you know, and then I could trade from uh, 1.30 to 2.15. And then that was it. But I knew what times I could trade. I knew what strategies I could look for. And I had everything set. And that, that really makes a difference. So if you don't have anything like that, that's something that you want to really, really focus on. If you're trying to trade at work, try to set time that you know that you have that you could focus on trading. Or if you have to, if you work and you have to come home from work to trade, have a process, you know, have a routine of how you start your day. And if something gets out of whack, 
and you have to end up rushing or getting there late, then don't trade. If you're uncomfortable, don't trade. Just wait. Wait till you can get a secondary set up. You know, come in on the backside. You know, if you have a process to your trade, it's going to help you. You know, it's going to tell you how it's put together. You know, you, you're going to focus just on executing them and managing the trades. Your focus is not going to be on anything else other than executing your trade. You know, you don't want to think about all these other things while you're trading. You want to focus on that trade. That's why I tell you, hide your P&L. You don't want to watch your P&L while you trade. No, you don't. You don't want to look at where you are because then you could start putting on other trades trying to get to a certain benchmark and your whole day is out the window. So if you if you build solid trade plans and you execute those plans, at the end of the day you're going to have money in the bank. Now if you don't, then that means there's something wrong with the plans you're making or there's something wrong with the stocks you're selecting. You know, then you can start trying to tweak it and figure out what the problem is. And after the trade, which is key and which we're going to spend some time on, is reflecting on your trades. And we're going to go through um, trades that I've taken and we're going to reflect on it. And everything that I do, that I think about, that helps me prepare myself for the next trade and the next trading day. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what matters to us in our trading. You know, and this is going to be from what you learn and you, you practice trading and you're actually trading. And once you figure out what matters to you in your trading, then you can start narrowing down this process. You know, what um, moving averages do you need? Which ones are important to you? You know, I'm sure you in, you know, you see in chat somebody's saying that, you know, this stock is sitting on a hundred moving average on the daily. Or this stock is sitting on a fifty or the hundred on the five minute. Well, I don't use those. So none of that matters to me. And even if it does bounce on there, I know that it may be those three out of 10 times that it might bounce. But I know the other seven times it's not. Or if all of a sudden this moving average starts to come into play, that's where reflection comes in because in my reflection I'm going to say well you know what so and so said that the 100 on the daily was right there so I go to the daily chart put the 100 moving average on there and look at it and make a note of it and if this happens three four or five times then I'm going to say okay you know what I need to adjust this. I need to start looking at the 100 because the market now is respecting this. And the reason being, these computer models and these algorithms, they get reprogrammed. And once they exhaust um, one strategy, they may move to the next. You know, they're trying to stay ahead of everybody else. So we as as independent day traders, we're able to make that change. Now, it, it takes time to figure it out. You can't just do it in one day or one week. Over a period of time, if a pattern starts to develop, then you adapt to it. You adjust. But it takes time.
All right, so I start my process by following the same routine when I get up. Um, and again, I can't look at it as a hobby. I look at it as serious. This is my business. Okay, so when I wake up, I go work out. Uh, when I finish working out, I take a shower and get dressed right there at, at the um, gym. I get dressed because I'm coming to work. Now, yeah, when I get home, I got to take my son to school. You know, I come home, I got to cut, I cut the, um, the scans on and log into the chat room. You know, I have to do that a little early now before the scans even start going. You know, because I have to leave at 7.15 to take him to school. But, you know, that's my, my process. So I take him and I'm back by 8. I can get breakfast. And I'm starting to look at these trades. Now I'm looking at, when I fire up my platform at 7, um, on Thinkorswim, I see stocks that are already moving. So, like today, BBY, I saw that moving at 7 o'clock this morning. Um, on before trade ideas even started. So I knew that I'm gonna watch this stock. I typed it in my phone. It was it was two, it was BBY and oh gosh, I can't remember the other one. It was a small cap stock. But BBY was the one I was the most comfortable with and I watched it. But it's it's a process. It's part of my process. Yeah, that's right, one. Yeah, F I L N. And um, it's part of my process. Now, it's not if it's not something that I just do, or I just thought to do all of a sudden. It's part of what I do every day. So I have that routine. So let's say. I get stopped by a train on the way back because I have to pass a couple of train tracks. Let's say a train gets through and I'm stuck and I don't get back here till like 8.45. Then I'm not going to rush. Okay, number one, I'm not going to trade pre-market because I haven't done my preparation yet. Number two, if I try to rush to build a watch list, I may mess up something. So I'm just going to take my time and work through what I have on the scan, build it up. If I don't feel comfortable with the time that I have to watch it going in the open, then I'm not going to trade. And that's the, 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 um, the discipline that we have to have. And that's why it's important to have a routine that you follow. And if it gets broken, then you know, okay, I probably don't need to do this today. You know, things didn't turn out right. I'm too far out of whack. You know, five minutes or ten minutes here is one thing. But I'm talking about a 30-minute hit or a 45-minute hit to your daily schedule. Then you probably need to change some stuff. Um, and you also know my watch list comes from my scan. You know, other people bring up stocks in chat, and that's fine. And it's not a knock on them, you know, not putting their stock on my watch list. The fact is, you know, I have a specific scan that I use and it's going to pull those stocks that are going to make the most sense for me. That's going to give me the best opportunity to trade my strategy. Does it work every day? Not every day. But nothing we do works every day. So, you know, I have to stick to what works uh, most of the time. What works for me 70% of the time. That's kind of the, the litmus test I use. Does it work 70% of the time? Then I'm good with it. 
Um, so I vet each stock the same way using that checklist. You want to have a checklist and when we when we get into our um, our technical analysis then I'm going to be sharing a checklist with you as to you know what I look at on each stock. I mean some of you, you probably already know but I have a checklist and I have to go through it and if it doesn't meet the criteria it doesn't get traded All right, so during the first 30 minutes of uh, the open, I'm watching the tickers on my watch list. And I'm developing trade plans on them based on the price action that I'm seeing. Okay, do I get fooled sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes it looks like a short. And the next thing you know, thing takes off. Um, FILN is a perfect example. It was looking short all pre-market. At the open, it cut and ran. And it kept going up all day. You know, we got the pullback, but it kept making higher lows and it kept going up. You know, but it looked short at the open. You know, going into the open, it, it looked short to me. Um, so you have to be ready that's why there are things that I look at at the open why I like to wait for the open and then I have a better idea so that and and why I have two plans one long and one short so that if it does go the wrong way or it does go a way that I didn't anticipate it to go at the open if there's a trade opportunity to the short side I'm gonna already know because I'm going to have a trade plan. If a trade plan doesn't make sense to the short side, then I'm not going to have it and I'm not going to take it that way. It's only going to go to the long side. So I'm going to have a plan for either way, long and short. You know, I'm going to say, well, what setup am I looking for? You know, that's going to be it. That's probably going to be the title. Um, I'm going to have my profit targets based on technical analysis. When we get into that, you'll see how I find my, my profit targets and where my stop's going to be. How I determine whether the profit window is large enough for the trade to make sense. You know, so if you ask yourself these questions, like when you're planning your trade, then you're gonna be good. You're gonna when the bell rings, you're not gonna have that deer in the headlight look, and you're not gonna sit there looking at a chart trying to figure out what to do. You've got it written down in front of you, and all you have to do is read it and execute it. Do exactly what you said you were gonna do on your plan, and and you're gonna be fine. So that's where, you know, you, you, um, if we're trading an open and range breakout, let's say we're going to the, to the long side, and you know that that your plan is once the stock breaks over the five minute open and range high, you're gonna go long. You know your stop is going to be a close below the five minute opening range high or if it hits your max loss stop you know you're gonna have to stop out so you know that that's already in your plan you already know what the technical level you're stopping off you're stopping out in and you already know your max loss on the trade so all of this stuff you know you don't even have to think about it when you enter it you just enter you take the trade. Don't think about it. You know your stop. You know your profit target. If it works, nail it. If it doesn't, stop out. Let's move on. Um, when you have these note cards and you have these plans written out, 
it's very hard for you to go wrong unless you're watching what um, three or four people are doing in chat and you're trying to wait for them to give you confirmation to take the trade that's when people start getting a little out of, little out of sorts So when you write your own trade plan, you're going to have to focus on executing it regardless. And if you need to do that in the simulator first to build confidence, you know, then by all means, you got to do it. But you have to do, write that trade plan out for every ticker that you're going to trade. If you don't do it, you're going to get stuck. And instead of focusing on the trade, you're going to be worried about finding profit targets, figuring out where your stop's going to be. And if you do that when you're in the trade and your anxiety level is a little bit elevated, it's not going to end well for you. You know, and there's some that say knowing when to exit is the hardest part of the trade. If it hits your target, it's easy. You don't have to worry about it. But what happens when it doesn't hit your target? When, do you, when should you exit? You know, this takes a little bit of experience. And this is what's going to, you're going to develop by reflecting on your trade. So if you have a plan ahead of time and all you need to do is stick to it, you're going to have a better chance of letting your winning trades work and cutting your losing trades off instead of the other way around. You know, this is going to help you manage your emotions while you're in a trade too. You have to, you need emotions. Emotions are going to protect you from yourself. But if you don't have them in check and you're not using them the right way, they can be detrimental to your trading. So that's why the trading psychology part of this class, I feel, is, is so important. Okay, reflection is key. It, it is key. And a lot of people forget this. They forget about it. They may journal their trades, but they really don't reflect on what happened in the trade. So you want to know, you know, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Should I have sold earlier? You know, and sometimes I'm writing notes about the trade while I'm in the trade. There's a, and next time, next class I have a picture of the cards I use and, and kind of give you a, um, you know, help, help walk you through the process because you don't have to use these over and over again, but I mean, you're going to get to the point where you don't need the cards anymore. You can keep things in your mind. Um, you'll just focus on one or two stocks so you can and you'll know where everything is just by looking at the chart. You know where your profit targets are. You know where your stop's going to be. You know, you'll get to that point. But to get there, this is one of the steps in the process that you have to, to do. And this helps you deal with your emotions because instead of you thinking about all this stuff you're just doing what you have written down here and then while you're in the trade on the back of that car you just just take notes as to what you saw you know like on um the BBY trade when I reflect the night I'm gonna talk about that time between 1.30 and um, 
3.30 that every time the stock dipped to, well, I mean, between 1.30 and 3 o'clock, every time the stock dipped below um, 39, these orders came firing in and they bought it right back up. Every time it would dip below 39, it would get bought right back up. You know, so these are things that I need to make note of because I know, you know, now I know what that is. I know that there is a big player sitting there trying to get his orders filled. You know, somebody's buying down there. And there's a good chance that this person has enough size to prevent the stock from dropping. And that's exactly what happened. You know, this person, whoever was buying it, they had enough size to keep the stock from falling. And it was eating up all of the sellers down there. And then you had, like, at 3.30, people that were short, were covering their positions, and that's when you start to see the price go up. But, <clears throat> you know, these are notes that you want to write down on these note cards, things that you want to be aware of. And one thing that I found out that if you write it, you'll remember it more. You write it, you speak it. Now, typing it, it's okay. I'd write it first and then type it last. I know it's, it takes a little bit of extra time away from that. But, um, you know, it, it's time as well. It, it's, it's well worth the investment right now. Believe me, it's well worth the investment. And here's a model that I've shared before. You're going to see it more times because I really feel that this is one of the best tools that you can have in your toolbox. This, these are the things that you need to write in your journal. Every week, I mean, every trade you take, you need to journal it. You need to write down what happened. What were you feeling? That's where these notes that you take during the trade that you may jot down on the back of the card. That's where these come in. But here's here's something else. If you take 10 trades and you have to stay up a couple of hours to write reflections on 10 trades, pretty soon you're going to do one of two things. You're going to quit during the reflection which is going to prevent you from moving forward in your trading or you're going to quit trading as much you're going to be more focused hopefully the reflection model will require you or will force you to focus more on your trades focus more on the best trades because when you reflect on a trade and you realize what mistake you made Hopefully you won't do it again and again and again and again. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that well for me because every week I do the same thing over and over again. But it works on everything else, but it doesn't work for me to stop me from getting in a trade too early. I'm always anticipating. I'm always thinking I know exactly what the market is going to do. And I don't. So the one thing that I have to write over and over and over again is I anticipated the trade. I didn't wait for the trigger. I just jumped in because I was didn't want to miss most of the move. So that's an issue that I still struggle with that I'm probably going to struggle with as long as I trade is that fear of missing out.
Now some days, like today, I, I managed it. I managed it well. But yesterday I didn't. I didn't manage it well at all. So, I know what I have to work on. But this reflection model helps me keep it in the forefront. So that if I do make a mistake, I know how to deal with it. And so what I want you guys is to use this. This is how this is what you're going to write in your journal. You know, obviously you're going to write the the date, the time, um position size. You're going to write the parameters of the trade. But then you're going to write the results of the trade. What what were the results? Detailed results. You know, what were you feeling during the trade? When you took this trade, let's say you took it with 500 shares and normally you do 300. You know, you want to take note of how you felt going in with a little bit larger size. Um, what didn't you like about what was going on in the trade? What did you see? You know, these things will help you the next time you get in a trade and help you make better decisions. You know, then you want to evaluate your trade. You know, was it actually, was it good or bad? You know, did you have a good entry? Did you nail it? Or did you have a good exit? Or did you take it off too soon? Why did you take it off too soon? You know, and then after you took the trade, did the trade make sense? You know, did your plan um, make any sense for that trade? And then your conclusion, you give your final thoughts, your final judgment. Um, talk about what you could have done better. And then your action plan is how am I going to avoid the mistakes? You know, you're going to use electroshock therapy. You know, are you going to go burn your hand on the on the stove or something? You know, are you going to make yourself do push-ups? You know, something. You know, what are you going to do to try to keep yourself from doing the same thing over again? You know, that's going to be kind of like your action plan. And this is something else that I've shared before in another, in in one of the the um, how to really day trade, how to really grow a small account video. Um, is the role of a trading journal. Okay, you want to have a. I mean, you can have a notepad. You can have a legal pad. Um, you can do it. You can have it um, electronic as well. But however you have it, you want to have your entry rules, your exit rules, your um, checklist for your stocks, everything that you use to help vet stocks, you want to have in your journal so that you can quickly refer to it. If it's just cutting it out and pasting it or stapling it to a piece of paper in your journal, then you want to have it there for quick reference. Um, what I like to do, you know, what I did was I made, I took a binder and the binder in the front of it, I had my trading plan and I'll show you, you know, I'll share all of this next week. Um, my trading plan, then I had, you know, and in that trading plan, it had all my strategies and my rules and stuff. And so I could take a piece of notebook paper and I could, you know, do my journal and then I could just open it in the binder, open the binder, put it in, close it back up and move on. I could just keep building it. Um, 
Some people like to print out charts. You know, they'll print out a chart and glue it or staple it, you know, to the sheet. Um, whatever. But you have, I mean, that's, I can't stress enough how important it is to reflect on your trades at the end of the day and journal. I, I can't stress enough how important that is. Because what it does is it helps you find your weak spots. It helps you adjust your strategy. You remember I told you about the moving average. You know, that's how I got the moving averages that I have on my charts. Is, you know, through this adjustment. Um, you know, lowering equity volatility. That's reducing your position size when you need to. Um, it keeps you aware of the mistakes that could be made. You end up having better trades in entries and exits. You know, and how to quickly get in and out of trades. So, I mean, this really, really, you know, helps you. And so going, you know, going forward, you know, I'm going to share all of this with you uh, beginning of next week, what it looks like. Um, I'll take some pictures of it and, you know, share those with you. And then we'll get into um, scanning and the um, technical analysis. You know, these are the you know we're building these are the building blocks of my trading and that's what we're doing first we're building the foundation with these building blocks so when we start looking at trades we won't be looking at powerpoints we won't be looking at presentations we're going to be looking at trades you know we're going to be watching trades develop watching for the entries watching for the exits you know all of that stuff is what the the core part of this class is going to be so once we get this foundation built you'll see how all of this stuff ties together All right, so do you have, does anybody have any questions or comments? You know, every week I wonder, I'm like, did I cover everything that well or did I just put everybody to sleep? No, this guy already told me I talk so I talk so slow. <laughs> See, Giselle is admitting she fell asleep on two slides. Okay, we're making tea. <laughs> Alex, this this is um this is cabinet making. You didn't sign up for cabinet making? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna stop the recording so I can. It takes a while to, to upload, so I'm going to stop it so it doesn't get any more. Doesn't get longer. <laughs> 